Good morning, friends. Oh, my goodness. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods, shall we? You know, it's, uh, you, you know what? Here's the thing. You have to find joy where you can in life. And you know what's happening right now is they're going to try and steal your joy today. Okay? The NFL, so they're going to try and tell you things. Well, the Cowboys, that, that, that game does not mean anything because the Cowboys can only beat you know bad teams. Well, when they go through and they count playoff eligibility, they don't go through and say, okay, well, this was against a good team, so that counts. This was against a bad team, so that one doesn't count. No, they count wins and losses. The Giants are an NFL team, a bad NFL team. I get it. But the Cowboys did exactly what they were supposed to do to a bad team. They stomped on them. They beat them down. They got out healthy. That's all you want to do. And as bad as that team was, they have truly been completely embarrassed twice this season beyond a shadow of a doubt twice by the Dallas Cowboys. Yes, they're bad. But they ain't been that bad to everybody. And there's a reason why they were that bad. Because, well, one, they had Tommy DeVito as a quarterback. But here's the thing that's kind of interesting about Tommy DeVito, who has only played in two games in his NFL career. That dude has got more touchdown passes than Daniel Jones, a $40 million a year veteran. Just saying. Just saying. Be that as it may. I want to clarify something because, you know, reading the comments, I do the best I can to try to read all the comments and everything else and get a lot of hate. Believe me, I get a lot of hate, a lot of trolls and all that. But you know what, trolls, you're appreciated too because without you trolls, YouTube isn't sharing my information as much because you guys come here so quickly and so often and tell me how much I suck. YouTube says, hey, People are watching, so thank you, trolls. You think you're hurting me? You're not. You're actually helping me, so I appreciate you guys. But in the comments, people were saying the reason why the Dallas Cowboys are losing is because of Joe Boo, and you need to burn that damn doll. Well, I got to say, here's the, you know, a lot of you don't know the backstory of Joe Boo. It was actually an Eagle fan in a trash talking group that I was in on Facebook that said the Cowboys suck so bad that not even uh, Joe Boo could help change their mojo. So I made Joe Boo originally as a joke. Uh, to share in my Facebook group. I took him around to, to like the Eagles Stadium outside and had a foam finger that he was giving them the finger and stuff. You know, he used to put a little hose in there so it looked like he was peeing on the stadium and things like that. And it was fun. But things started happening that were really kind of cool, like Joe Boo was actually banned from the New York Giants facilities. The first game he went to was after the Giants had won their last Super Bowl, in which case the Cowboys won. We had him in the facility. The next year we go back, the community uh, director said, he can't come in. After he came in, all hell broke loose. Joe Boo has been across the country. He's been seen with everybody from Roger Goodell to um, being on the top of Camelback Mountain or top of Diamond Head and things, okay? He has been with the mayor of New York. He has been, you know, with on Calais Campbell. Whenever Calais Campbell sees me, he says, where's Joe Boo? When Tyron Smith saw him, the next week, he got his massive contract. Dak Prescott, I need more Joe Boo in my life. And Joe Boo's only been around since 2012. So if you're talking about he's the reason why the Cowboys haven't been winning Super Bowls, you actually have to look at the Cowboys since 2012 and say the Cowboys have been better since 2012 to 2023 than they were from 96 to 2011. And you have to dare say, as much as it pains Cowboy fans and pains me that we're not having as much success as we've had in the playoffs like we've had in the past, you have to at least recognize that at least what's happening right now of two years at 12 and 5 
playoff years, at least one playoff win, and seemingly looking like they're a playoff team, because I literally had people last week and the week before saying, you know, the Cowboys, they're, they're going to miss the playoffs. No, they're not going to miss the playoffs. question will be is where will they be in the playoffs? Now, I know this is not a real measuring stick for where the Cowboys are, but collectively you have to look at the positivity of some things, of the directions where we're going. If you looked at the Dallas Cowboys offense, the first couple of games, early games, it's unbelievable because CeeDee Lamb, we were talking about CeeDee Lamb is checking out. This offense is putrid. That, that, that I don't know what Mike McCarthy is doing where he's talking about running the football and he's constantly trying to run Tony Pollard up the middle of the field, you know, back to back and getting like one yard. And it's like, that's not his game. Where's the 12 personnel out there? Where is moving the pocket for Dak Prescott to get outside where he is really good? It seemed like they were trying to make him early on a pocket, center of the pocket, stand there, one read guy, and it was just you were missing stuff. And we've heard people that are constantly saying, well, he's missing this guy who's wide open. And I'm going to say, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. A couple of things. You don't understand if this is by plan and design or if it's just that when you're looking at a play, You're looking at a top view where you can stop it, start it, slow it down, and everything else. If you had to put your ass behind the center, catching the football, knowing that your right side is coming coming at you, that you got two and a quarter seconds to decide where to go and to deliver the ball right then and there. It's a lot different than when you're sitting in your basement looking at film and saying, well, this guy over, okay, you know what? You can probably do that with a lot of people. And as I was pointing out, because people were saying that, you know, well, Brandon Cooks, he's streaking wide open. Was he open at the time? Boom, I looked at you. Was he getting open? Was his route run precise of where he's supposed to be? Can I see little Brandon Cooks when my right tackle is standing straight up with a guy with his hands up in the air. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just pay, putting positive, you know, a, a an idea, concept, a maybe where something's going on. Because as bad as people, oh, well, he sucks. The crazy thing with the Cowboys, Dak Prescott, it's, it's let, let me do this. Okay, let me just do this, okay? I know but they're going to say, well, it's against bad teams. He's a garbage ass quarterback. Then, then let me ask you this. How come other people aren't doing the same thing then? How come the great quarterbacks out there aren't doing the same thing then to these trash teams? Just listen to this. This is what Clarence Hill posted, I believe, last night. Dak Prescott completed 26 of 35 passes for a season-high 404 yards and four touchdowns. Prescott has also rushed for a touchdown in today's win. So that means he was responsible for five. Prescott, 404 passing yards were his 10th career 400-yard game, tied with Dan Marino and Pat Mahomes for the most 400-yard games in a player's first eight seasons. Prescott's 10 400-yard games are also the most in franchise history. In fact, you can take everybody who's ever thrown a football for the Dallas Cowboys and all the 400-yard games and add it up, and they still don't get to 10. In his last three games, now this is what I'm saying, including the Eagles, in his last three games, Prescott has competed 72%, 72.7% of his passes for 1,082 yards and 11 touchdowns and is only the 11th player since the NFL merger to pass for at least 1,000 yards, 10-plus touchdowns, complete at least 70% of his passes, and throw fewer than two interceptions in a three-game span. Prescott has thrown for 300 yards and three touchdowns in three consecutive games, which is a Dallas Cowboy franchise record. Now, I get it. Football was different when Roger Staubach played. Football was even different when Troy Aikman played. 
wasn't that much different when Tony Romo played where you look at him and say he was the greatest passer we have. Prescott's 138.3 passer rating today was a season high, and he's recorded a 100-plus passer rating or better in four consecutive games. The last time he did that um, was 2021. Today marks Prescott's 33rd game with three or more touchdown passes, tying Brett Favre for fourth most such games as a player in their first eight season NFL history. Most games with three passing TDs in their first eight seasons. Dan Marino with 42, Pat Mahomes with 38, Peyton Manning with 37, Dak Prescott with 33. Can we end the whole bench Dak, trade Dak, Dak Prescott is trash? I, I, I'm just, just asking for a friend. I'm just asking. What Dak has done the last four games with a new offense, new players around him, an offensive line that hasn't been great is nothing short of remarkable. And if we go through the numbers right now in the NFL, and this is taking those first early games that were ugly, and we looked at it and said, maybe Dak's lost it. Maybe the injuries have made him not a capable NFL quarterback. He's second in completion percentage, 70.7. Right now, he is seventh in yards at 2,415 yards passing. And mind you, Sam Howell is leading with one more game than Dak Prescott has. Uh, interceptions, he's way down the list. He's 12th, okay, with interceptions, with only seven. I'm sorry, six. Yards per, pla- per pass, 8.1, 8.1, which is fourth in the NFL. The last four games, 11 TDs, two interceptions, a 72.7 rating, and averaging 338 yards per game. Now, understand this. Dak Prescott is doing incredible, but he is not doing it by himself. We want to give the quarterback too much credit and too much blame. Because it doesn't matter what he does if the guy on the other side isn't catching it. It doesn't matter what he can do if the offensive line is not blocking for him. For CeeDee Lamb to make that incredible, impossible one-handed catch where I don't know that he saw the football because the guy is literally right here. Look at that pass. It's like that ball literally just flashed and it's in his hand and he caught it. Dak made an incredible throw. But that throw means nothing if C.D. Lamb doesn't catch it. And C.D. Lamb is on his own historic pace. C.D. Lamb is the first player to have 150 yards plus with 10 catches plus in three consecutive games. So as Dak goes, CD goes. And what should be noted here with the Dallas Cowboys is, it's kind of like, um, I'm trying to think of the type of, I guess it's a diesel engine, but you know how when you first start an engine, you know, it's kind of like pop, 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 and then it's now it's going it's revving or maybe an old train maybe an old choo-choo train yeah it's a choo-choo train you know you got the old piston okay right but those first couple of it ain't got no power it's pretty much just spinning in, in spot, the same spot. Then it starts getting that speed up, right? Then the train starts moving. 
And then it's easier, easier for that piston to keep pushing the train because now it doesn't have that resistance. It's now flying. That sucker can go until it crashes. If it goes too fast. Shout out to you, Ward family. Ward family taking care of those train wrecks out there. We appreciate you. And that's what the Dallas Cowboys offense is doing. Because even against the Eagles, the offense was moving pretty well. The only thing that was really stopping that offense was the officials. But that's another thing in itself. But what you saw was, it, it's in my mind, I'm, I don't know if this was just happenstance or if this was the move. Because it's kind of like we, we first game, the first game against the Giants, it seemed like the feature was the tight ends. Hendershot was getting his chances and Ferguson were getting their chances. They dropped, you know, pass after pass. They dropped quite a few passes. Yeah, and, you know, they, they talked about them and things about dropping passes. And then it was, you know, we were trying to get Tony Pollard because Tony Pollard had more touches the first couple of games than anybody else in the NFL. It's like, we're going, okay, we're going to work. We're going to feature Tony Pollard the next couple of games, you know? And, and so Tony Pollard, you know, he was looking pretty good right there. So we were working and focused on, so we went tight ends. And then we went to Tony Pollard and all that. And then we kind of looked and said, you know, we, we forgot about CeeDee Lamb, who's a contract year. You know, CeeDee Lamb is kind of like, you know, I'm less than 50 yards a game. You know, it's kind of check it out and hacking him, have a conversation and say, hey, we're going to work this shit out. And since that time, You've seen them really feature C.D. Lamb. And while C.D. Lamb has gotten, you know, right? You already had Jake Ferguson over here. He's beginning to pump out and he's beginning to play better. He's beginning to be like, okay, he, he's, he, he's not Travis Kelsick, you know, although he's averaging more yards right now per completion. But he's becoming a guy that you say, okay, he's a capable tight end. So you got C.D., Going, you got now Jake Ferguson who's kind of right. Then you start thinking, okay. And I went into this game and I said, this is going to be the game that they start working on Brandon Cooks. That this is going to be the week we feature him. Because now teams are out there first. Okay, Tony Pollard's getting the ball. We got to stop the run game. They're a run team. Ah, we got to stop that, okay? And then, then of course, you're know, working on something. And then you start getting, you know, Jake Ferguson going, and, and then you get CD going, okay? So now teams are thinking, okay, we got to stop the run. We got to go ahead and we got to get Jake Ferguson, you know, and, and, all. and now we got CD, okay? Now we're focused on those things, and now all of a sudden you feature Brandon Cooks. And they went to him the first play of the game, and they kept feeding him the ball. They kept using him in a number of different positions and moving him around the field. And because now Brandon Cooks is going, it's making that much easier for CD. They sent a message, I think, to Michael Gallup that you're going to be on the field, but you're going to do some dirty work. I saw Michael Gallup having to block he had him in tight formation, and he literally had to turn around and seal, seal block, okay? You don't usually have a wide receiver seal blocking an offensive lineman coming through, but they literally did. And I don't know if that was intentional to say, you know what, you're not getting, because they weren't throwing the ball his way. They weren't, you know, he was out there, and, you know, blocking, okay, you did that, right, we're going to toss you a bone. And they started throwing him some passes. And for the first time, we're seeing Michael Gallup looking like Michael Gallup, who used to make contested catches down the field. We saw him literally with, you know, Dak Prescott doing a pinpoint bomb where they say Dak Prescott can't get the ball downfield. And Michael Gallup is pretty much covered and slips in there, boom, makes that touchdown reception. So now the choo choo train is getting at full speed. And you have some games now where you look at it and say, okay, the Cowboys have some games where they can work on some more stuff. Because yesterday felt like, uh, and Giants, I'm sorry, I feel bad. I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to kill you guys because I feel bad for you. Because I don't understand how a team who we had pundits out there saying that, you know, I, I trust Daniel Jones more than Dak Prescott. That Dak Prescott, right now, halfway through the season, has more touchdown passes than Daniel Jones had all last year. 
halfway through the season. Halfway through the season, Dak Prescott has more touchdown passes than the guy you paid $40 million to. Just saying. Just saying. I'm not going to hit you guys. I feel bad. I feel bad. You know, as passion as it is, this, this is the thing that's sad. That guy, Vic, the comedian, you can see he's passionate about the Giants and hates that. You can see Rashid. Rashid has literally literally checked out on the Giants. It's it's sad to see him sleep through a Cowboys Giants game. To see Bad Dog with a bag on his head. To I haven't even seen Pizzle. I feel I, I know Pizzle is the, the you know he's he's the, the oldest giant YouTuber out there. That guy is incredibly passionate. Me don't necessarily see eye to eye, but I know that this burns his soul and is killing him watching his team that supposedly had so much hope and promise, but truly is ass ass. I'm not going to hit those guys. They've been beat down enough, but the Cowboys now have a chance to try to get healthier or stay healthy to stack up some wins and get some momentum. Because now they're two games behind the Eagles. The Eagles, you control your destiny. All you got to do is win. That's all you got to do. But now you have to be looking in the rearview mirror again at the Cowboys. The Cowboys whom have been playing lights out at home for once. And maybe just for once, the Cowboys have a home field advantage. I want to listen to my quarterback last night, who, if you look at him, if you look at, 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 at my quarterback there, he's looking kind of like Ryan Fitzpatrick there with the shirt open, the hairy chest, and the chain. You know what I'm saying? He's looking like Ryan Fitzpatrick. And you notice the smile. You guys, uh, was it tough to focus on, on, on this team, you know, considering, you know, they're starting to rookie quarterback, so many things going bad for them. I, just talk about the way you guys focused and took care of business against this team. That <clears throat> No, I wouldn't say it was tough to focus. I mean, I've talked about it week after week. This is the NFL. Those guys get paid. Those guys – uh, hopefully love this game and, and put the same preparation and work into it. Uh, so you've got to, you know, prepare the same way, stay focused the same way, and then go out there and try to handle business. Um, and not only that, it was game one, right? I mean, obviously they haven't had probably the season they'd look forward to, but that being game one until now, there's probably things that, you know, they pictured maybe maybe go better, this, this, and that, that, yeah, we, we, we came in with the same focus as we normally would, obviously. Um, didn't score on that first drive, but, but, but got momentum going um, and – uh, yeah, we're ready to go. We're ready to play, and, and we'll continue to do that. As I've talked about, this is about us. This is about us running our own race, and you know, what, no matter what the score is, the other opponent, what they're going through, what's tough, uh, tough for them, young quarterback, whatever, we're, we're trying to build. We're trying to build and, and become a better team, and as I, I said, show our best performance and best versions of ourselves each week. Uh, Dak Tyler to the ESPN. You, you've outscored them by 72 points this year. Is that unfathomable in some sort of way? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, it's got to be a record, uh, I'm sure. Um, the points that we've put up in two games, obviously, and then credit our defense, uh, them holding them to, what, 17 in two games. I mean, um, hard to do, hard to do in this league, hard to do against a division opponent, somebody that you see twice. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, but that's, that's not something, you know, it's not a goal we went after, not something that we're trying to, you know, make sure we do this. Uh, obviously, we wanted to handle them for the, you know, second second time this season, and, um, just happened to be in that manner with that many points and, and the defense playing as well as they did. Unfortunate uh, circumstances for them, young quarterback, but he, he made some plays at times. And um, yeah, so I mean, good for us. Calvin. Calvin Watkins, Dallas Morning News. Uh, your thoughts on how you've been playing the last four or five weeks, especially since after that 49 game? Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I go back and, and talk about, I think about before the 49ers game, going into that game, I, I felt confident I uh, felt good about everything that happened the results just obviously were not there but in this headspace being prepared um, chemistry of this team 
chemistry of the coach and staff, credit them. And I feel like I talk about them every week and hopefully deservingly, or hopefully I do and deservingly so because uh, they're a great group that are, that are giving us everything that we need, staying on us, always making changes when we need them. And uh, they're fun to, to play for and, and, and to play, play with in that sense and work with. So I uh, credit them. But for me, it's just about being comfortable, being free, as we talked about going back to the off season, the footwork, all the different things that you know we worked on. And I just feel like, obviously, at this point, so many games in the season, all that's uh, coming to play. And it just feels more natural, you know what I mean, that, that we're this far in it, really listening to my feet, believing them, the pass protection, working hand in hand, being able to change up uh, so many protections. Guys being dialed, guys outside going and making plays. Obviously, C.D. Lamb with, with the, the 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 streak and the, the I don't even want to call it a streak because that's who he is. Uh, it's just what he's he's beginning to do week in and week out. Um, is is it starts with him, but then those other guys understanding we're going to get one on one opportunities. We're going to we're going to do the same thing. And obviously, Brandon had a night tonight. M.G. Uh, a couple of big catches. Um, yeah, so everything's just really coming together, and, and that's my point of. This is about us. This is about us hitting hitting our peak at the right time and just trying to grow. And uh, we're going to do that. We're going to we're going to make sure that 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 doesn't stop. We're not um, we're not satisfied with this. I can promise you that. Uh, I'll have an interception and, and two maybe two or more plays. One should have been an interception that that I won't. You know what I mean? Get quite this the, the peaceful sleep that I want. We'll be thinking about. But that that's where this that's where I am. That's where this offense. That's where this team is striving to to be our complete best. John, uh, John show to the athletic. Why do you think the connection with Brandon Cooks was, was working so well right from the beginning in the entire first half, really? Uh, p- practice, man. I mean, y'all, y'all know me. I, I always talk about practice, what we put into it, going back to this game plan, going back to early in the week. Uh, you know, I, I told him, you know, say, let, let's, let's put the work in, and it's going, it's going to come out. I mean, he's, he's been there for us all, all year when we've needed him to. There's been games that we've come back and said, oh, could you get him more involved? And yeah, sure, maybe so, right? Uh, he's that type of player that, that deserves those questions when he's not getting those targets or getting mm-hmm. those catches. And then a um, little communication that we had th- uh, this week, and then he had a great week of practice. Some plays were, you know, built and meant up to go for him. And then the others, he just he went and won. When they would double CD, they would do this or that. He went and beat his man and uh, made it easy for me to throw. Michael Gelkin, Dallas Morning News. Gallup said afterward the game that it feels like this performance by all the receivers will change the way that future opponents cover you guys in terms of all the attention they pay to CD. They can't do that any longer. They might try, but it's shown that you guys can overcome that. <coughs> do, you, do you see that this could be some kind of a change, changing point for how teams approach you guys? Mm. Uh, yeah, I mean, sure. Interested what they'll do. Um, you gonna leave CD one on one then? Um, so, yeah, I mean, if you do get eaten by understand everybody else. That people are always trying to take away what you do best. Uh, but when those guys go out there and they perform like they did, to Michael's point, I don't know what a defense does. You know what I mean? You've got to leave one on one somewhere. And MG's gonna go make those plays. Brandon's gonna go make those plays. Ferg's gonna go make them. Um, you want to play soft? We'll just get the run game going even more. So, uh, sure, um, interested to see how it goes. Sonny's the athletic uh, Jack, a couple of things that you just mentioned. Clearly the passing game was a story, but the run game looked to get going. Um, what can you say about how you guys got that going and also just the play of Rico Dowdle today? Yeah, I mean, it starts with those guys up front. Uh, their communication, us being on the you know same page, getting to the getting to the looks that we want, uh, Mike dialing it up. Uh, and yeah, those guys running really, really hard outside the tackles and then boom, then being able to pierce it up the middle. Um, and then Rico is a hard nosed runner, um, and it has been from I mean the time that he showed up. Obviously, he dealt with some injuries and some adversity uh, early in his career. But to just see him out there now, healthy, uh, running physical, um, he's a talented player. And then obviously, when you have TP, they have that speed. Just being able to to use those two guys are going to continue just to help us and allow this offense to be balanced as we move forward. You often hear run to set up the pass or pass to set up the run. How do you view how those two things work? Me particularly. Yeah. Run to set up the pass, uh, you know what I mean? Started off there, and I'm a guy that loves play action. Um, and, and just it creates favorable matchups, right? When you, when you have the run game going, they've got to play one-on-one outside. They've got to get in a single high. Uh, and then, yeah, from there, the way these guys are running, the way these guys are getting open, winning their one-on-ones, makes my job a whole lot easier. Yeah. Justin Barnes, Pro Football Network. Dad, can you talk about MG's night tonight and kind of building that confidence back up with him with the plays he made today? Yeah, I mean, if anybody has been a fan of MG, I know everybody in here can attest it's me. Michael and, Gallup. 
Um, understand that he's had some, some tough games, some adversity, um, but that's life. The last thing he's going to do is fold. The last thing he's going to do is, is, is allow that to get to him. Allow, I'm going to allow that to get to me and not, not feed the guy. So um, happy for him, honestly. Uh, not surprised. Not surprised at all. Uh, happy for him. Obviously, a huge catch down in the end zone, making another big one later. And that, that's who he is. You get the, get the ball up, give him an opportunity, and watch him go do the rest. And uh, as I said, that, that's just when he could do that, other guys are winning. Interested to see how they play us, what, what they decide. Jared. All right, we're gonna we're gonna end it there. We're gonna end it right there. That's my quarterback. That's my teammate. And if you say anything about him, it's not fair. Wow. Now, what we have to do, what we have to do, is we have to be able to turn this on with the winning teams, and we've got an opportunity to work in tweaking this offense a little bit more against the Carolina Panthers, that were already eleven point favorite. And then we've got the Commanders, which is a team that is putting up some points. They're staying there in games. They just haven't found a way to win. It's going to be a tough test there. Then we got Seattle. And Seattle will definitely be a great measuring stick before we take on the Eagles. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate you guys. Peace. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Sports Report.